This topic is going to talk about the development tool within Max and Solus. And it's used to generate any sort of custom logic uh, that you might want to put into your system. Um, so to, to get to this, I'm going to use the Land Mapper BC example scenario, which is just a, a fully configured satellite. And the example I'm going to use is, um, let's say we wanted to take our Atlas payload here, and we wanted to make the power consumption of this system a function of the range to the target. Uh, so that's the, the general design that we're trying to do. And I'm going to walk you through how to go off and do that. Um, you see here this development tool page. I'm going to click this button, and it's going to pull up the Max development tool. Um, and this is where we kind of start our user interface. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, create something, a new project here uh, called Range Payload. And we are going to build a Visual Studio 2017 solution. We can also do Visual Studio 2019 if you do the free version. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go take a look at this directory in my file system. And you notice that the directory doesn't, doesn't even exist. I'm going to back up here. So I've got a few items in there. I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to kick off this new project. And we see that it immediately created uh, this range payload um, folder for me. And I can dig down into there, and it's created a Visual Studio solution. I'm going to open up this solution. And there's a lot of things that have already been kind of configured. But we see that there's two projects. Uh, one is our, our main project, and then there's this XML project as well. Now, the XML is going to define where you take your conceptual idea and go turn this into or uh, the, the new objects that you want to build. So this is going to define what are my new objects, where do they get data from, where do they push data to, and you're building up this, uh, this piece that we're then going to go use the configuration manager to configure and connect. So the first thing I'm going to do is go off and uh, build this scenario. This solution and we see that it builds off the bat and if I come over here and I refresh this window you notice that I have a DLL that already exists and this is going to work with uh, the rest of Max and Solar. Um, from here, we want to get into defining this, uh, this new component that we're interested in. So I'm going to go into the XML, and the XML is using a schema, which kind of defines all the things that are possible. And I am going to create a new component, and I'm just going to call it range power and now I know that I'm looking for uh, a system that's going to produce power to the power model and to go figure out what type of interface I'm going to need 
and go over to the configuration manager and let's find the power model UI power and we see this the current payload the spectral imager is producing an ODY power load and connecting it up to the power model. Uh, so now I'm going to go implement this particular interface within my component, which we will eventually replace to be connected here. If I want to look into some more details about the, the ODY power load, um, we provide all of the XML that's that's generated for the Max Core um, with with the Solus release, and you can go find those in this uh, example Max Dev Tool XML location. Um, so I'm going to go look at ODY Power. And okay, so here's here's the interface interface that we're going to need ODY power load. It has one property to it, and we can go look at the ODY power component that we just looked at. And here we can see that there is a list designated by container type vector that's coming into the ODY uh, power component. So translating that over to, to our new example, I'm going to use the base interface tag, which means this is an interface that my new component is going to produce. And I'm just going to specify that ODY power load. Um, so let's run the dev tool on this and let's let's see what ends up happening. Um, so I run the dev anytime I'm editing the XML, I'm going to want to run run the dev tool, which interprets this XML and creates the framework for all the new components. Uh, I'm going to run this generate code solution button. But I'm also going to go ahead and say save to .bat. So this saves a, a batch file, which is saving all the settings we have here and allows you to uh, run the dev tool by running a batch file if, if for example, your, um, your GUI has been closed. So I'm going to say save to batch file. I'm going to go to this location and I'm just going to call it run dev tool. Okay. And let's go take a look in that location. All right. So now I have uh, right here a batch file that I can run. And I'm just going to go ahead and close this UI. All right, so when I ran that dev tool, you notice that my Visual Studio solution has said, hey, there's some new stuff. Um, do, you want to re do you want to load that? And so I say yes. And there are some C++ files that now exist in our system. Um, just a little note on, you see these .auto CPP and .auto HPP. The auto files are auto-generated by the dev tool, and they're never intended to be hand-edited. So if I were to edit this file and then rerun the dev tool, the dev tool is going to completely overwrite what I just did. Um, this stuff contains all the background framework piece that we really don't want users to have to worry about. 
uh, and it allows us to ensure that we're making our connections, we've got our appropriate telemetry uh, interfaces with the rest of the system and many of the main place that users will interact will be uh, the non-auto files. So here I have a header, which I could define certain things in if I want to. Um, but primarily, we're looking at the uh, .cpp file. Now, the dev tool has done a bunch of work within the .cpp as well. And any sort of custom logic that I put in here is not going to be overwritten by the dev tool. It understands how to take these things and parse them back together. You're never going to lose any work that you've done. Looking down at this bottom function here, we see that it says from interface CIF ODY power load. And what this means is because we specified that our new component, our range power component, is going to produce the ODY power load interface, the dev tool drops the stub functions from that interface into our component here. Um, now, other items in the system that might connect to this interface are going to have the ability to hit this function, and it's our responsibility to determine if somebody calls this function, what do we want to return? Uh, taking this a step further, in order to, we mentioned that we were going to compute the power consumed or that was drawn by our payload based on range to a target. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to have to get some information from the rest of the system. And here again, you might go to the existing XML and start searching for the things that you're interested in, one of which is going to be uh, position. So I have these files loaded, and I'm just going to go ahead and a search for position in all the open documents. Um, so here I find the interface definition called FSW ephemeris. And within that interface, I have the ability to get the spacecraft position in the CBF frame. CBF being, meaning central body fixed. Uh, for a spacecraft that's orbiting the Earth, this is equivalent to ECEF. So that's something I'm going to be interested in. And I want to be able to pull that data. So I'm going to go over here to my configuration section. And I'm going to say, give me an interface. And I'm going to pull in the FSW ephemeris interface. Now, why is this part of the configuration section, you might be asking? And the reason is all items in this section are specifying something that you want to configure on this object. The definition that I'm showing here is is not specifically saying that um, that I'm connecting a a specific object to my new component. It's it's merely saying there is a 
connection point or a port of this particular type. And it's going to be our responsibility to go configure which interface connects to that port. The other thing we're going to need to know is how to get information from the target. Where is, where is this target located? Um, I could again go into the existing XML and I'm going to search for target. And I see some interface items um, of FOB target. This would be of interest to me. I'm going to keep going down that thread. Oh, there it was. And here I find the interface definition of FOB target. Let's look what's in this interface. Here I see a CDF position. <coughs> and I notice that this is for setting. So this is not an, a get functionality, something else can set it. But I do find this function called uh, get position val CDF. So I, I have a function here where I can pass in a time and I can get out the position of this object at that point in time. The reason for the timing is because if it's a scan, you have some translation that's going across that scan. So I'm going to say that I need to get the FOB target. And the last thing I'm going to bring in is I want to get the original power load because we're going to use that to determine when this, this payload is on. I could go run the dev tool. It's going to give you this response over here. And we want to make sure the IntelliSense uh, in Visual Studio gets updated. Uh, sometimes it does it on, on its own, and sometimes you have to go to project and say, rescan the solution. So it's scanning the system and it now knows about the new things that we just added. Um, so I'm going to come into my logic here. And there's a couple, there's a structure that I want to uh, make you aware of, which is the M connection structure. And within here, we have these interfaces that we're planning on connecting to. And I could go to, say, the ephemeris interface. And now I see access to all of this data that's part of my system. And in particular, I'm interested in this function here. Now, if we're going to go off and compute the power that's being consumed here, we likely would want to put that out as a piece of telemetry from this new system. And so 
I'm going to go to the telemetry area and say I have a basic item. And I'm going to say power load is going to be a double. And the units are going to be watts. And I'm going to put a description here. I run the dev tool. And now there's going to be a new structure into our system. Called m underscore telem for telemetry. We notice that I immediately have this new piece of telemetry available. And I'm actually just going to return if, if some other object hits this function, I'm going to return this value. Now we haven't gone off and computed this value yet, but that's the next step uh, that we are we're looking for. Um, I may get to this point and realize, you know what, this is telemetry based on range. And I'm going to go ahead and decide that I want that in my telemetry as well. And I'm going to run the dev tool. And let's take a look at what just happened here. Um, I'm going to go into these dot auto files. And you notice you know, this is where that M connection structure is defined, and this is where that M to lens structure is defined. We have these new items being built up automatically for us. I didn't get save earlier on this. I'm going to return that power load. And I'm also going to say um, I have my range here, and we're looking to find that to something. The next thing we're going to need is um, we need to get information about the target. I'm going to look at this interface and I mentioned this item before uh, but we're going to exercise this function and it tells you the, the arguments to be had. The first argument was time. Um, for now we're just going to say zero and we're, we're not initially going to be looking at scans, and it, it won't matter. Uh, the next thing is these are going to be output arguments. So it's outputting the position and the velocity. So we're going to need to create those variables. I'm going to create a target position. I'm going to create a target velocity. I'm going to assign those in this function argument. Okay. Um, 
Um, all right, we're looking to compute range here. So I'm going to get a vector, and I'm going to call this uh, spacecraft to target. If I take the uh, spacecraft position, at the target position, that's going to be a vector between the two. And the range is going to be the Euclidean norm of that vector. So, uh, so there we have it. This item, uh, if you notice, I've been putting a, a suffix that kind of gives me the, the units of the system. So this is meters and meters and meters. But here, my telemetry, I put I want in kilometers. And so I'm going to divide by 1,000. So now I've computed the range. Um, and we said the power load is going to be some sort of function of range. And let's say we've, uh, we're going to want a parameter that defines um, This is going to be in watts per kilometer. It's going to be a tuple. And I will go ahead and run that tool on that. Rescan the solution. And now I'm going to find that there's another structure of interest. is m prime for the parameters. Okay. So here I have watts per kilometer multiplied by kilometers. And that is going to result in watts. Um, so we want to actually take advantage of the, the commanding of the original payload and just kind of do a, a bit of a modification to this. So I'm actually going to say if the original power load is greater than zero, meaning it's trying to be on, then I'm going to compute my power load that way. If not, I'm going to say the power load is zero. So I've just maintained all the all the commanding that I might have in the system. Uh, my calculation is not quite right here. No, that's correct. Okay, so
watts per kilometer times kilometer is one. So I'm going to go ahead and build this solution. And I can go over to my system here. And we'll get a timestamp, and we see that the timestamp has updated. And so I've rebuilt this. This new DLL has been updated. It's ready to go. Um, we now have our object available, but we have not actually configured this into our system. Now we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, using the configuration manager, we are going to copy the existing uh, solus generated configuration, which is defined by everything over here in this UI. And I'm going to make a copy of that. And I'm just going to call this custom table. Uh, so I now have two configurations in my system, and the one being ran is designated here. Uh, so the distinction is the configuration manager is defining all the configurations that exist. This one is specifying which one is active. So I'm going to set the custom payload active. And the first thing we're going to go do is add one of our new objects. And here we see the factory type range power. And a lot of times we just end up naming the component the same as the factory. Um, Master ID defines the, how the command and telemetry gets uh, put out and what packets it goes into. We need this to be a unique value. Uh, I'm just going to call it 678. And we're going to want this to um, execute after the original payload and before the power module. So that's this, what this priority defines. So I'm going to go take a look at the uh, configuration that exists. Let me just fill these out for a moment. Uh, I'm going to call this ORP as a prefix for range power. And I'm gonna agree with that. Okay, so let's go look at our configuration and where we're going to want to have this item iterate. So I'm gonna sort by priority. And I'm going to go find the ODY power model. The ODY power model has a priority of 2500, meaning the ODY ephemeris is going to run first, then the ODY power, then thermal. So it goes from, from low to high. Um, so I'm going to have my power component, my new component, fit in just before this guy here. So let's put him at 2400. I'm going to go to edit this version, and I'm going to say its priority is 2400. Okay. So now we have one of these objects in our system, but 
there's nothing configured about it. And to think about what needs to be configured, we would go to our XML. We need to define these, and again, configuration section. We need to make these connections of the interface type, and we want to set this parameter as well. I'm going to go to connection. And notice that the UI already knows what connections are possible. So I'm going to say the FOB target, and it has a list of everybody that exists. I'm going to use the I'm going to connect to the general target, and I'm going to say OK. I'm also going to make an assignment for FSW ephemeris. Now there's only one component in my system that's producing that interface, so that's the one I'm going to connect up. And lastly, okay, so the ODY power connection. Here we notice that there are multiple components in our system that are producing that interface. I have to choose which one I'm connecting to. In this case, I'm going to grab the original output of the payload power. All right, now I've made those interface connections, but I also want to define this new parameter that we have here. And let's set this value to um, 0 0.5. Okay. So now I've I've configured my new object, but I also want to connect that into the rest of the system. So I want to make sure the output of my component goes to the power model. So I'm going to go to the power model here. And this is the nominal configuration, the nominal version. I'm going to create a copy of that. So now I have this custom power version. And I have the ability to modify this connection here. Instead of passing the original interface, I'm going to pass in the one from our own range route. Okay. So there we've made our connections. And we can come over to our telemetry interface and take a look at this new piece that just came in. So I now have range power, and this is my telemetry that I've specified in my brand new parameter. I'm going to add that packet. And now we can go ahead and run this system. Load is going to be exercised when we arrive at the, the target. So the 
you see us through to this span here in a moment. There we go. at this load power here. And the payload is now on. And we see this dynamic load that is going to run. It is about uh, 480 watts, I think I saw. So we're, we're looking at the range from here to here. It's going to be exercised again here. On real quick. All right. Now, not only are we running our new system here, but I can actually attach to the debugger. I'm going to go to debug, attach to process. And I'm going to attach to max. Now, I can set a breakpoint on the system. And I'm actually running, so we've, we've stopped my sim, and it's waiting on me to proceed. So let me put this in here. And I'm going to hit F5 to run again. And it ran until we arrived at this next, next peak. Now you can come into your specific logic, and we can see that the load level power, so there's our 0 0.5. Our range was computed to be 981 kilometers. Now, let's say I wanted to modify this parameter. Let this system run. I'm going to come over to my real time commanding. And I'm going to use the misconfigured parse command. Okay. Um, so our object name was range payload dot variable name equals, instead of a half, I'm going to say 2.2. I'm going to prepare and execute. And I'm going to go back to our debugger here. Let's see if I got that correct. So I had a, an error in my commander, and it had an issue with range payload. Did I get that name right? It doesn't look like it. It's not range payload, it's range time. I'll let this run again. There and execute and look at the command history. Seems to be okay. Let's go to the original debugger. And here we see that my parameter is now 2.2. Okay. Um, so you can see how this works, how you're able to do very custom logic and um, 
I showed you configuration. I showed you telemetry. Um, if we were to add a command, we can also use this command section. Maybe I have an input, a couple of input arguments. Maybe this one is a vector. I'm going to stop the debugging that we have. Stop this sync. And I want to get this new command into my system. So I'm going to run the dev tool on that. Now we see that I have this new function in my system for, for accepting my command. And it has an argument structure. So arg1 was a double. Let's say I do something like uh, if arguments arg1 is greater than okay. uh, then I'm going to say going to return an error and otherwise we're going to return okay. I'm going to compile this and Notice that if I come over to the system panel, let's say I want to um, see that command, we immediately have my command as part of the system. Um, one thing I didn't do quite right is the arguments here for a vector um, we need to see each individual axis we need to do that Going to build the dev tool again. I'm going to build this region.
now I see that I have these arguments here. Let's go ahead and kick this off. If you recall correctly, we said if the first argument is greater than the norm of the second, we're going to return an error. I'm just going to test this out in my real time command. I'm going to go issue our command here. All right. So let's say all these arguments are one. And I send that command. If we look at the command history, we have the command status, everything's okay. Now let's say instead of one 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 this argument was three. We now see that we've got an error return. So I'm, I put in a command and I was able to ex define what that functionality is and easily start executing it. Um, these commands can do all sorts of things to the rest of your system.